Hello everyone. Earlier I was recording. I thought I was recording and I am doing and I was doing all of that talking and I learned it was not recording. How embarrassing that is. <laughs> I was teaching really good too. I don't know if I can say the exact things I was saying before, but whatever. Let me try. We have to understand when we pray for things, for instance, let's say you have prayed to God one time, more than one time, about something. God, please help me to understand your word. Please help me with this. Please help me with that. We have to understand God uses people. I don't know every time, but let me say some of the time. I believe God uses people some of the time to answer people's prayers. If you look in the book of Judges, the nation of Israel would disobey God so many times and God would allow bad things to happen to them. And if I remember correctly, much of the time when the nation of Israel would cry out to God, what would he do? He would send a person to help them, right? So when we pray, I don't know every single time, but let me say some of the time when we pray, I truly believe God will use a person to help you. To help us. God may use a person, people, to help us. I hope this is making sense. So let's say you have prayed to God. God, please help me in your word. God, please help me to stop doing this and stop doing that. God, please help me with my depression and my uh, this issue and that issue. And let's say you have prayed that over and over and over again. Okay. Let's say you meet this man or that woman or that person. And then that person begins to teach you the word begins to tell you how to avoid this problem and this issue and this and that. And let's say you start to notice, hey, I prayed to God about the same things this person is helping me with. Do you think this, do you think that is coincidental? Do you think that is like a freak chance? Do you think that is just, you know, just so weird? Like, how can this be? No, I truly believe God may have sent that person to you to help you. I hope this is making sense to you now. Okay. How strange would it be for you to cast away that person. Like, hey, let's say that person is teaching you, showing you the way, blah, 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 blah. And let's say that person has touched a sensitive nerve. Inside of your mind, let me say this, if this fits you, wear it. If it doesn't, don't wear it. So let's say that person touched a sensitive nerve. Inside of your mind, 
you are always innocent. It is always someone doing wrong to you, not you doing wrong to another. So you are this, inside of your mind, you are this innocent person where even if you do wrong, it is right in your eyes. Like you can justify you're wrong as being right because of what that person did, what that person said. So even if you do evil, your evil is good. But if someone has the same reasoning as you, like, hey, I did this evil because that person did this or that, you will say that person is wrong even though that person has the same reasoning as you. <laughs> How strange is that? Anyways, let's say that you cast away the person that has been... How can I say this? Let's say you have cast away the person that God has sent you to help you with what you have been praying to God about. Now, do you really want God's help? You ask it, like, do you think God is going to come down off of his throne straight to you, daughter, son, your prayer has been heard and this is what I am going to do. Do you believe, please listen to what I am saying. Do you believe God is going to come down and appear to you and have this very long conversation with you Now, I guess with some people, let me say this. I don't think that is going to happen to everyone. Let's be serious. I believe God will use a person to help you. In order for you to change, can you still repeat those same actions or can you continue on the same path that you have failed so much on can you how can i say this in a way to where it will make sense let's say you are doing something that doesn't work and you know it doesn't work let's say a person comes to you showing you a different way why act arrogant? Why act conceited? Why act arrogant when you don't know how to get out of the rut that you are in? Please tell me. So the person that God has sent you, doesn't it make sense to listen? Doesn't it make sense to humble yourself? Doesn't it make sense to sit down and be quiet this like why battle with the person that god has sent to you if you already know what to do why have you been failing so much why have you been going in circles why are you repeating the same mistakes if you already know the way I hope this is making sense now. If you already know what to do, why do you continue to fail? Why are you staying in depression? Why are you, you know, like... If someone is trying to help you, you need to mature. Of course. The person who is helping you will touch on a sensitive nerve. 
because you may be delusional. You may think your wrong is right. You may believe you have the right to do a wrong thing just because you grew up this way, just because you had enemies, just because you feel like life hasn't been good to you. Like I said, if this fits you good, if it doesn't, whatever. We need to stop being ignorant. We need to be like, stop, stop getting offended so quickly. You are the one who prayed to God, right? You are the one that asked for help. You are the one that is in bondage. Let's say someone came to you in love. Someone came to you in peace. Someone came to you in understanding, but because you are delusional, you don't want to be wrong. You don't want to, I guess, in a sense, change. You rather push away that person God sent you than for you to face yourself and say to yourself, I am the one that needs to change. Accountability. Is that a big part in your life? Do you want to be held accountable? And I think many people that seem to be hurt, I think some of them don't want to be accountable. No, it is not my fault. It is that person's fault. Yes, I cussed that person out. Yes, I did this wrong, but I did it. But I am not wrong. <laughs> I am not wrong. But if another person does what I have done, that person is wrong. But I am not wrong. Do you see how twisted that is? Do you see how hypocritical that is? Do you see how off-sighted that is? Can't you see that is a problem? Of course, if you are so sensitive, if you are so ignorant, if you are so blind to your wrongdoing, of course you would get offended and all this stuff here. But you need to take it. You pray to God. You prayed to God asking for help, but now you are rejecting it. If you continue to reject God's help, how are you going to change? How? Have you thought about this? You may have it in your mind how God is going to answer your prayer. Can you really force God, <laughs> my Lord, can you really force God to answer your prayer in the way you think he should? No. So if God has, is, or has, is answering your prayer, take it. Something is wrong with you. You can't continue Placing the blame on other people. No, the blame doesn't come on me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. No, 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 no. The blame is on you. Yes, I do almost everything wrong. Yes, I say things I shouldn't. But I do wrong because of you. <laughs> I slapped your face because I felt like you offended me. Do you see how... <sighs> So I can do wrong because I feel like it doesn't mean you did wrong, but I felt you didn't do wrong, but I felt like you did wrong. So because I felt it, that means it is true because if it wasn't true, then I would not have felt it. So now you make your feelings the judge. You are twisted. 
You are twisted. Stop rejecting God's help. I truly believe much of the time when we pray for stuff, God sends a person. Stop pushing away these people that God has sent to you if they're not doing anything wrong to you. Are you understanding what I am saying? Let me stop here, though. May God bless you.